Hi, I'm Saina Inc. and today I will take you to the tour of my current Phantom Pen collection. And this will be a long video, so grab some tea and remember to subscribe. So, first I'm starting with the brand Twispy. I have a Twispy 700R buck. It's a vacuumatic filler. One of my uh, favorite Phantom Pens. It actually didn't make it to the list because it's Liano in the clean. I usually have the Mont Blanc gray here, and also Twispy Buck is quite large pen. It has huge nib, and I feel that sometimes, especially when this pen is full of ink, I feel it quite heavy and quite hefty in my hand as well. Then we have two 580s. I have my Diamond 580, which actually is my favorite Phantom Pen in top one. And then we have 580 in rose gold. And really pretty color. I like the black and gold accent. Nip is also rose gold. Really pretty. Usually I have some warm ink in here because it's complementarily well on the other accent. Then we have more colorful punch. We have the Ecos. I have got all the <laughs> Ecos that have been green. I have the transparent one, currently inked actually. Uh, then we have this one. I it's triangle shaped, so it's eco T, and I don't remember which it isn't this one. I have cleaned this just recently very badly, I should say. And there's the other lime green version. I don't remember the exact models and years, but yeah, this one had the custom nib. Yeah, it's still wet, so. That's why it looks a bit funny. But this one has custom needle point grind nib I got from uh, FB nibs. And then I have also the glow in the dark model. Then I had Twispy's Swipe. This is more the entry level pens. And I have to say, this is the most annoying pen to clean ever. <laughs> it has really weird pump filler. And I think I have inked this once. It was some really really uh, saturated ink and it was so annoying to clean that I didn't even clean it properly. This is really light and one of those pens I don't use that much. It has ink window. So yeah, there's all my uh, Twispies and I think uh, Twispies is actually not the brand I have the most but I think for as the brand they are uh, one of my favorite because I know that every pen I have got from Twispy are just been really good. I have actually a Twispy all coming, so it will be added to this one. Next we have Lamis, and I have one of the special versions, uh, the Pokemon Lamy, that was only available in China, so I had to get Taupo again to get it to me. Really great pen, and it's really cute as well. And this one is Lamy All Star, originally not my pen, so it explains why it's brown and not, not green. Then we have a black and white Lamy. This is not the Stormtrooper one. It's even draw it even draw it has this black eagle back of the cap. I got this really cheaply second hand. This is I would say almost like vintage Lamy Safari. Really beautiful. Only problem I have is that the white section I'm worried that will get stained easily. And for the safaris I have switched this nib. Originally I think it has this black M nib. But it's I like the black and white combo, even if it's really hard to keep it clean. Then we have Vista. This is one of those pens that has special meaning to me because I bought this from the Lamy flagship store in Helsinki. That store is no longer there, but I always remember to going in person in the store and picking up the pen. And I think the Lamy Vista is just super beautiful. It just makes the regular safari look much more elegant when it's clear. Then we have the Lamy <coughs> Safari in neon green. Uh, the year it was uh, available, I got one. And then I think someone sent me one. Then I thought, uh, got one from a gift. So, yeah. I have three, and I don't regret that at all, because I, I think that it's really great pen to have, and because I you can get variety of nib, like having extra fine nib, having a calligraphy nib, you, you don't need to like 
you can just like have the multiple pens and different nibs. It's like I think it's great to pen have like duplicates, and also I think they look really, really nice together when all the three pens are like next to each other. Then we have smaller pens, my Cavecos, and we firstly have Lilliput. I haven't inked this pen and I haven't been using it because it is so small that I it actually got lost in my Fanta pen drawer, so it's unused pen. And I'm a bit sad that the nib is uh, chrome colored, I would love to have it black. So this is a really small pocket pen. It's also all metal, which really made me a bit uh, questioning my choice, because I usually don't like all metal pens, their section they tend to be slippery. But the Lilliput posts really securely with the stretch, and it becomes full size pen. Of course it's, not, it's really sleek, but I could see myself using this one. And this is also extra fine nib. Most of my pens are with the extra fine nib, and that is my choice of nib, almost always. Then we have a Caveco Sport. We have few of the sports. We have four. This one is from the Cult Pens. It's their green version. Really pretty, of course, I had to cut it. This is Pearless Kent. And it's from Caveco Collection. Today, uh, not today, this year they released the apricot version, which has similar Pearless Kent effect. Really pretty. And I think the chrome clip goes really well with this one. And then we have the Kaveco that was like meant for being a highlighter. I think this still has the huge 1.9 nib. Going to change it to extra fine at some point. So this has like this yellowish cap. I would love to see that back being the same color as well because I don't like it to be clear. But it is what it is. I hope this will be stained with the ink at some point. Then we have the, I think, the Sorbet collection. Uh, or was it Lime Sorbet? But this is like a um, pastel Lime color. Then we have two all, uh, uh, almost an all star, Caveco All Sport. This one is pen I actually didn't buy. I think it has medium. No, I haven't changed the extra fine. I want this actually in the Apple Boom Pen and Phantom Pen Friday giveaway. They did a while back. I don't know, does they still do that? But I want this pen. Been there, and then my favorite Caveco, the all black version. It has black extra fine nib, and it's it's lovely. And I personally like uh, the Caveco Sport. I think it's really a pocket double pen. It's small, and since I have tiny hands, I can use it unposted. So for me, it's not like needing to post the pen to be usable, since it's usable right out of the after uncapping it. Then to the pilot. First I have pilot vanishing point. I sadly have the fine nib. I would love to have an extra fine nib in this one, but it's so expensive to get the nib unit. And this color I think it wasn't even available with the extra fine. Of course I had to get it because it's green. It's one of those pens that was... I was thinking it's going to get really expensive because I ordered it overseas, but there was actually no custom to this on this pen, so it wasn't that bad, but it's sadly one of those models that is quite hard to get in here in Europe and getting it extra fine is almost impossible. Then we have a Falcon. And it has that really nice soft extra fine nib. But it's really nice uh, soft, soft type of nib you can use for drawing. Also, I like its classic look. Even if I'm uh, all in the green pens, I also like classic black resin with the chrome or especially Rotarium is really beautiful with the black pens and also the gold. You will see when we get in vintage pens that I'm also in the black and gold combo. Then we have two Kakunos, Pilot Kakunos, in the green and gray. Kakuno is one of my uh, favorite pens as well. Because Kakuna is really small. It's smaller than the Safari. It can fit well in the pencil case. And they have phenomenal nibs. I think one of these is medium because... Yeah, this one is medium. And at first I was like, oh, I have never been using the medium nib. But actually I find it really good that I have one with the medium. Uh, this one has... This is extra fine. 
I think this is just fine. Yeah, this is just fine. And I think this one is extra fine. Oh, and this is just fine as well. So I have been actually noticing it's really good to have the different line weights because you can have like all of them ink with the black and then use them like in different parts of the drawing. This one I think was the, some special edition. And this one I got just because then it, it was only up one I could get with the extra fine. <laughs> of course, when I put in the pen away, I found found it on the pile. Yeah, I wasn't mistaking. There's one of the extra fine kakunos I have. And it has green cap and clear body. Then to the sailors. And I have first the sailor professional gear slim. It has gold. I think it's 21 karat, uh, 14 karat gold nib. Extra fine, one of my favorite pens. And it's like, it's beautiful, it's green. It's it's lovely and it's really nice writer. Then the other sailors I have are the entry level pens. I have two sailor Fudia pens. I have the green one in medium fine, but it has the Fudia nib. And then I have pink one. I hate pink, I don't like pink, but I got this because the Fudia nib and this was on the sale and it has different angle than the green one. And these ones are a bit hard because they, as you can see, they are super long, so they are not so travelable. But when I saw that Sailor came with this beautiful finish, this is similar to the Kawaii Pearl. And I don't know what's this name. This is some Sailor as well. Has Fudenip. Clear feed. I was, I was sold on this pen instantly. I got mine still on Estile. I will actually, I, will, I can link them below. They... They are in the EU business company, they are in the Italy, and they have some of the pens, especially on the sailors that I can't find anywhere else. Then we have Sailor with the bunny. It has bunnies, and they, there's like hop lines. And it's really super cute. And this one has a regular nip, me, medium fine nip, and clear feed. It came with the ink. But of course I have to get it, it has bunnies, it's so cute. And this one, like entry level sailors, they are still super good, like solid. Uh, quality on the sailor. I was really surprised because at first I was a bit hesitant because this one feels plastic. But these two feel super good in the hand, especially this one. The build quality is, is, is super good. Same goes with this one. It's clear. It's like all the way clear and there's no foggy parts on the cap or anything like that. And the clear fit makes it really, really fun looking pen. I was like, I have only one platinum, but I actually have found another one. I have the platinum 3776 with ultra extra fine gold nib. Then I have platinum placer in this gorgeous ombre color. It has green feet. I just cleaned it and it's still a bit cloudy. I actually had ink drying up here. And what happened was that the ink was actually waterproof. I was not aware of that. So it probably needs one more round in the ultra cleaner. But it has clear feed, uh, green feed. Feed are right here on the black, like the feed inside. It's carded converter pen. And it has really secure capping mechanism. Only problem I have with this pen is that the section is not tapering. There's no trumpet tape, so I have this hard time to hold this one. Then the last, pen, uh, last brand I have more than one pen. These are Opus, Opus, Opuses. This one is Opus 2023 Special Edition. It has bunny. And I got this as the gift. So it's their, uh, I think it's small or mini or something. I find it a bit funny that the cap ring actually doesn't uh, go with the, with the cap, but it's here. Opus 88, it says on the ring. And it's... Quite small. It isn't postable, but it's. I have small hands, so it's very usable. Only complaint I have about the section is that there's no. It's really slippery and it's like um, tapers down, so it's really hard to hold. It should be have like the trumpet shape, so I could rest it a bit more easily. And this is also 
eyedropper filler, so whole paralysis filler, I think. I find it really cute, and it, uh, also one of those pens I quite often use because it has huge ink capacity. Tend to Opus 88, which is huge pen, like super, and especially my hand is look comically big. Like it's really, st uh, if you want to pen that makes statement, this would be one of them. It's always get all the attention because it's clear. Uh, mine is stained purple because I uh, have purple ink this one. But I like the clear aesthetics and also the black lip thing. But it's quite big, but at the same time it's really light because it's all plastic and it's nice to hold. So it's one of my, it was one of my favorite list. I will link the video in there. Well, then we have the list. The pens, I have only one. And then immediately I noticed that I have two pelicans here. But let's not get into that. Uh, this one is no non-brand. This is actually a Chinese pen, but I would go and show it because it's special. It says they like. Uh, it has extra fine nib and you can change glass nib for this one. Like it's not glass nib that uh, takes ink from the reservoir, but it's like dippable glass nib. Uh, it was reason I got this pen and also because the color, but it's really handy to have the glass nib in the really securely plastic body that I can take it with me and if I have a small ink jar with me, I can use it as the dip pen on the go. I don't know the brand, I think it might be Moonman. Uh, then we have two fountain pens that are, I think uh, these are custom, this one's from Kickstarter, green and sparkly, uh, has extra fine nib. No, it has stub nib. Why have stub nib in this one? Probably reason it's uninked. <laughs> uh, it is like, it was custom turned, but the Kickstarter made that I had to wait a huge, huge long time. Almost, I think I forgot it also. This was from the same maker, custom pen. I was actually first inquired about the other pen, and then the maker said that the color was not bright green as it looks in the picture. So then the maker made me custom blank. It's this gorgeous bright green one with these swirly patterns. First and only custom pen I have, and I love it. I remember when I got this, I was actually at work, and I got the, the parcel del delivered to my workplace, and I opened this at work, and I was like, oh, this is so stunning. And it is. Uh, it's material that has depth to it. So when you look, you can see that it's like, it's not just on the surface, but there's some, like, deepness in the material. Then we have Franklin Kist Christoph, completely unused. It has now replaceable, uh, I replaced the nib. I have the st still, it's still a nib there. Uh, reason why I didn't use it is because this has defective nib and they didn't change it. So it sit in my drawer for a while. It's also one of those pens that is quite long. And it is, uh, let's compare with the Opus. Yeah, it's even longer than the Opus, so it's super long. But it, because it's tapering, it feels like it's more brush-like. But definitely pen that would not be so handy for travel. Then we have Pelican. This is Pelican Twist, uh, made for kids. But it's super comfy to hold. It has triangular section. Uh, rubberized, so definitely for longer writing sessions. This is pen that you can't hold wrong, it's like really good. I actually used to have pen grip like this, which is uh, incorrect. And you can actually gri uh, grip your pens however you like, but this one lastly really puts too much stress on my thumb. And with this pen I actually felt that it's... Uh, I could correct the posture. This can take long internal cartridges and also Converter, so really good. Also, because made kits, it's made from plastic and it's really durable. There's many colors available. There's also some, I think it was rose gold at one year. But I got this bright yellow green. But then we have a Pelican 120. This was their, this came with the double broad nib. I switched it to the extra fine. This was their highlighter version in green. And it came with the green highlighter ink. And the ink actually smells so bad I can't even open it. I have never used it. Uh, I, I like this a lot. I don't know why, but this is rather inked in my collection. Uh, somehow 
it seems to be that other pens got inked before this one. One of the reasons might be that because it's piston filler, it's quite hard to clean and it's not so easy to service than the twist piece. Uh, then there is the carandash, and with the carandash, I have problem that the nips slide out really easily. Front of the nips shouldn't be able to slide out without any gripping material. The pen itself is regular coated convert, the color really beautiful, mine is actually dirty. Nothing other wrong about this one, but of course the problem is that nip because it's, it slides out. Then actually the only only pen I have from Chinese apart from this one, the Moonman, and this is their clear clear version, and I got it because I just like the I like the aesthetics. It's uh, all clear and all these clear bits on both ends. It doesn't have roll tops. It's eyedropper filled, so it's really pretty when you feel it. It's like becomes the color. Of your choice. Only problem I have with this one is that the cap ring is red, so and it's not changeable. And I think it now is available in different colors as well. But it's only only these two are only more Chinese. Pens. I have other Chinese pens. I had the video about them, but I actually didn't include in this video at all. Okay, then we have three phantom pens. I forgot. We have. Parker Urban. This was actually my first fountain pen. I didn't use it that much. It has really dry, dry nip in a fine. And it's just Parker proprietary converter. It's all metal construction, so it's quite heavy. But nice all black pen. Then we have Tom Studio pocket pen. I'm not going to open this one because it's recently leaked in my pen, pen case from this hole, so... And it has currently a brush attachment, but it's one of those fundamentals I regret buying. I have other speciality fundamentals that are not here. And there's the IndieCraft pen, which have like the water reservoir on the cap. And you can put Indian ink in this pen and it will never dry up. Yeah, that's true. It will not dry up, but after men I open this one, I dare to do that. Uh, problem is that I screw the barrel out. And the other problem is that the section is wet, <laughs> because this uh, cap keeps it wet, and now I can't even open it. Yeah, so there are some, some problems with this pen. Okay, so now we are entering to my vintage fountain pens. I have few. I actually narrowed this section of my collection down quite a bit a few years back. I sold a lot of my vintage fountain pens, well, I think most of them, and only left the ones I truly cared. And this one is Wall Eversharp. It's sack filler, and I have restored it myself, so it's working condition. I don't know what the nip is. Uh, I think some kind of italic nip already worn, worn down. Somebody loved this pen a lot, and it's really beautiful color, like green and gold. There was an inscription when somebody scraped that off. Never do that, because phantom pen collectors usually doesn't care if there's inscription. I would, like you will see soon, that most of my pens have, vintage pens have inscription. Also, somebody broke down the clip. But it's really beautiful, but it's really striking. Striking vintage pen. Uh, then we are entering to the black. Uh, boring blacks. I have Pelican 140. I think this one is medium nib in the black and gold. A uh, piston filler, quite common vintage fountain pen, which you can find. Gold nib, like this one too. Uh, I have another one here. This one is in color blue and it has engraving and a gold nib. Also piston filler. Then we have the two Osmia. Uh, let's take the one that I here as well. Pelican Stormtrooper in black. This one has a regular stainless steel nib. This one is not so old. It's, uh, I think it's from the 80s. But it's a bit too hard to get. It's quite popular. For me, I have problem with the white section. I'm 
be terrified to ink it because it's pissed off I should like dunk it into ink so I'm worried that ink will stay in the section. Then we have two Osmias. Uh, Osmia 973, also piston filler, tiny nip, gold nip, really good nip. Osmia make best nips in my option. And this is one of my favorite vintage pens. It's really small, nice to hold, really beautiful. Also works perfectly. Work it often cleaning, so I haven't even like service it. Then we have other Osmia. This one is older. Uh, this one I serviced myself. It needs a new seal. There is this is even older. It has it's piston filler still, so you have the piston turning knob behind the blind cap. Gold nib, a really smooth, super soft gold nib. Not like super flexi. I have flexi osmias on the on the part. Then something super rare, Haro, sack filler. It's not black. <laughs> has glass nip. And this one is not dippable. Uh, it, yeah, you can dip it, but it has a reservoir here, so you can fill it like regular fountain pen. You use it, and the ink will just come down with the grooves to the tip. Very beautiful pen. One of my favorite, like, rare vintage pens I have. It's so rare that I haven't seen another one in the interwebs for a long time. If you search for Haro Class Nip, uh, it's have a number one there. You will actually find my post on the no Found Open Network. Then we have Osmia School Pen I just recently acquired from my dad's belongings. It's semi hooded nip and it's a uh, regular, like, it's almost between piston filler and Converter because the, uh, it's like converter because it's inside the pen, but at the same time it's like piston because it's integrated to the pen. And this worked straight after it was clean, so it worked straight out of the box, just drinking. It has nice medium nib. And also I love the dusty blue color with the gold cap. Uh, then we are approaching to the last batch of fountain pens. These are my vintage fountain pens that are, I would say, that are not in use, or they are not restored, or they have some issue. Let's start with top here. Faber-Castell. Faber-Castell was close related to Osmia, and this is like copy pen of the Osmia. I saw you earlier. They are like Really similar. This one has inscription on the barrel. Doesn't bother me at all. This has nice stainless steel nib that is like full flex. It's also wet because I just <laughs> it came from the cleaning. But yeah, it has full flex nib. It's, if you see that Osmia diamond on the nib, you know they will be super good and definitely worth pursuing. Then I have two. Faber Castells. These are also. This is 884. This was actually moldy at some. So again, Osmia. Beautiful Osmia nib with a diamond shape. Full flex, full, full fl vintage flex gold nib. One of those nibs that I think is really desirable to have in the collection. Uh, sadly, this pen has, as I said, it has been moldy, so it needs some. Uh, sanitizing, I would say. Also some more cleaning. Also, I think there may be some leak in the piston. Uh, then we have Mont Blanc. And yeah, that's a vintage Mont Blanc. Somebody salvages the cap ring there, thinking that is the gold part. No, it's not the gold part. The nib is here. Uh, nib is actually broken. On the back there is a crack, so that affects how the nib works. Also, the feed is corroded. Piston mechanism, it's not tight. There's also a few pieces missing. Noticeable the cap ring. So pen is not in usable condition, sadly. And, but the color is beautiful. Makes me even extra sad for this pen. But I can't ink it because the, all of the flow is sweat on the feet. And the nibs need to be some, like, probably some welding. 
and it has it is piston filler, so it has a telescopic piston inside. It's like two states. Really funny mechanism. But yeah, one of those pens that sits in my drawer and waiting to do I can restore it. This pen I exactly no, there's so much material missing. Then we have Pelican Ibis piston filler. Currently not in use because it has leak. Uh, piston seal is not sealing correctly. But has same cold limp as the Pelican 140s. Uh, this EP is smaller, but still a very nice fan open. Also one of those really common in the Europe if you got one. Then we have another Harrow. This one I haven't yet restored nor opened. You can hear. If you get old pen that rattles, don't don't be alarmed. It's old sack that has been disintegrated inside. It's like in dust. Yeah, I think this is... Uh, like it's called hard wrapper, and you can see that it's more blacker here, where the cap has been sealing, and it has gone a bit grey on the barrel. And it has a, again glass nib, and it will be similar than the other harrow. So when I change the sack, sack, I can just pull this lever and there and draw ink in the pen. This one also has the, I think the original clip. I'm not so sure. I, uh, it's really hard to like look into these pens because they are so rare. There's also something white there. A discoloration, I, I think. But yeah, this is a long and one probably one of the oldest, oldest pens in my collection, but it needs some restoration. Then we have another Harrow. These parts are also hard rubber. They should be black if they are well preserved, but this one no, they are turned brown. This is piston filler and glass nib. Uh, it may feel funny, but I say glass nib and fountain bass are super rare. And somehow I have three in my collections, all of them are harrows. There's other makers that do them, but they are they are really hard to come by and they are one of those pens that you rarely see in selling. HV Faber Castell, older pen, really gorgeous color. I have no clue about the filling mechanism, it's like pops out, but I don't know should it do that or not, and how you fill this pen. Uh, what I know is that it's not usable condition, the seal is not working. Then I have the three Artus Prince pens I left in my collection. I used to have quite many of these, these are Finnish school pens, so they are really popular, uh, was like really common. Uh, this one I saved because it's really funny, like pen opens mid, <laughs> mid barrel, and I think this one is piston filler. And the last pen here is the Lamy Artus, and the reason I saved it is because the, uh, it tells about a little bit history about the Lamy pens and how they like changed their name during the years. So yeah, that was my Phantom Pen collection on my modern pen and vintage pens. And I hope you make it to the end. Video was really long because I have quite many fountain pens. I'm also quite often getting new fountain pens, but on the recent years, there hasn't been that many additions to this collection. So thanks for watching and hope I see you in my other videos as well.